Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. And in the previous video, we talked about Rudin's uh, series and sequences. And we're going to talk now a little bit about the main aspects of his fourth chapter, which is on limits and continuity. It's actually, it's, it's odd that it's called continuity when it's really, it really should be called limit theory. So in any case, um, he, he defined a metric space as a set with a distance metric on it. And of course, uh, the set of real numbers do form a metric space with a distance metric, as I'll show you in a moment. And this is where all your epsilon delta arguments come from, even though they weren't originally stated this way. This is how the older mainstream idiot mathematicians used to think. Okay, so... He says, yeah, let X and Y be metric spaces and E a subset of X, and then F maps the subset into Y. Suppose F maps E into Y, and P is a limit point of E. Okay, it's so badly written, by the way. I mean, uh, if anybody who hasn't actually done a mainstream course of study and real analysis, that person would find this very difficult to understand uh, Rudin was a very poor writer, and he, this book is extremely poorly written, too. So, um, in any case, and he says, uh, the limit of f of x is x approaches p is q. And so, then he defines, he talks about what he means. He says, if there is a point q in y with the following property, that is that every epsilon is greater for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that this distance metric, this distance metric, is less than epsilon. So, if we look at this now carefully, this, this, uh, this morphed into. No, I want to do that. This morphed into the following definition. Hang on a second. So. Basically, this became something like this, uh, x minus uh, q less than delta, something like this, of x minus l, which is, uh, I'm sorry, that's... Uh, that is f approaches q. Yeah, sorry, that should be p there. This should, this should be p. It should be p, and this should be q, and this is less than, del than, than epsilon. So this is where this garbage came from, okay, from this. And I'm going to explain to you what was going on in that Austrian Jew's mind, because I'm a genius, and I have very deep perception. Let's go. So if we look at, uh, this is a geometric, first of all, this is a geometric limit theorem that I came up with. And I'm not going to go through the derivation, but you can read this article and see how I came up with this, this formula, okay, which expresses E in terms of delta and conversely delta in terms of E. And you can read the proof and then come back to the applet, which I'll also give you a link to. So I'll give you a link to this and the applet. And I just want to demonstrate to you what he meant. So so basically, if this is, is approaching a point P, let's say this red dot here is the point P, okay? This is approaching the point P, then basically you can make this distance less than any epsilon. That's all it really means. For all x for all x is an element of E. So E is really, you could think of E as this little subset of points, which doesn't make sense because points don't really have any dimension, size, or extent. It's got nothing to do with points, but it's all formulated in term, terms of the point concept, which is a bunch of crap. Basically, as far as real analysis goes, a point is very well defined in geometry, but in real analysis, it's, it's garbage. It doesn't mean anything. And as I said in the previous video, you can't have a one-to-one -one correspondence between points and numbers because you cannot 
uh, reify all those numbers. Okay, so you can read up on that over here. This was approximately 2014 when I first discussed this with the idiots on Sci.Math. There was a professor called David Aldrich who just dismissed this applet. But you know, here's the funny thing. Uh, even after I told him that the theorem works for any function, still didn't believe me. So you can choose anything you like in here, okay? You can choose, put put a new function in here, any function you like. So let's say we put a parabola and let's, let's put a parabola. Let's say x squared like that, okay? The same thing will happen. Now, I need to be able to get over there. Yeah, I'm unable to move the damn screen. Oh, here you go. Okay. So the same thing works. As, the, as this green circle approaches the red dot, the, the area of this broken line circle will approach zero, and it will work the same for any function you put inside there, which means really you don't need a whole course of epsilon delta proofs or a, a six-month lecture on how to prove these inequalities. They're totally useless crap. This theorem that I that I showed you here, that I'm showing you here, works the same for anyone. See, as soon as you move it there, this circle here is formed by this equation. Uh, not that one, this one. Okay, it's formed by this equation. So honestly, I mean, <laughs> I don't know how to tell you that this is total crap and it doesn't mean anything in calculus. It's not even required in calculus because calculus is based 100% on geometry. And the new limit method is something that I came up with also trying to fix mainstream understanding. And this is a very detailed article, which I'm not going to go through now either because I've done it in past videos. In fact, I've done both of them in past videos and I've shown you how it works. And so I'll place a link to this too. If you have an appetite to go through this crap, uh, have at it. So basically what Rudin was saying here is that you can find the limit by thinking of it this way. Okay, this is, this is the first part of it. And in chapter four, he does a lot more of this and he continues to bring up new theorems, but it's so badly written here. Here you get the so-called limit laws, you know, where you have uh, uh, the limit of a product and a sum and a quotient. And again, it's all defined in terms of this distance metric. Okay. But in modern analysis textbooks, you won't see this anymore. You'll see the inequality style that I showed you earlier. Okay, so the next chapter, I think, deals with, if I'm not mistaken, oh, another thing I need to mention, the piecewise function crap started with this guy. You know, I believe it started with this guy in a big time. So when you do your AP calculus course and you're given those trick questions on whether a function is continuous at a point or, or has a derivative at a point, that's what you're dealing with. It, it all stems out of this absolute rot. Here's an example f of x is equal to zero. First of all, f of x cannot be two rules, okay? It can only be one rule. And calculus, if you have a function like that, you cannot have more than one rule to find the area here under this curve. So if you had that and then that, and you try to apply the fundamental theorem or the mean value theorem to this, it wouldn't work because it's not smooth. The methods of calculus don't work unless you're dealing with a smooth function, meaning one rule and the property of smoothness, which you do not have with piecewise, that drivel known as piecewise functions. So this continues all the way through to differentiation, and I'm going to leave differentiation for the next video. If you're not already subscribed to become a subscriber, click like, follow me on academia.edu, and also join my members only channel. Okay, my members only channel for a mere $4.99 a month to have access to a lot more than I normally share with the public. My name is John Gabriel. This is New Calculus Channel. Till next time.